In 1994, a company known for making Walkmans and stereos did something unexpected. Sony released a gaming console. Not just any console, but one that would go on to sell over 100 million units and completely reshape the industry. This gray box killed the cartridge era. It brought Hollywood production values to living rooms. And it proved that sometimes the best way forward is to ignore what everyone says is impossible. But here's what most people don't know. The engineering inside this machine was years ahead of its time. The technical decisions Sony made in 1993 still influence how consoles are built today. Nintendo owned gaming in the early 90s. Their cartridges were fast, reliable, and profitable. The entire industry believed CDs were too slow for real-time gameplay. Sega tried with the Sega CD and failed. Sony saw it differently. They'd been making CD players since 1982. They understood optical drives better than their competitors. Their theory? If you can't make the CD faster, make everything around it smarter. The question was whether they could pull it off at a price consumers would pay. Every PlayStation starts with a disc that has to be perfect. The process begins with polycarbonate plastic heated to 300 degrees. A laser etches data onto the surface. Then the CD spins at 500 RPM, while another laser reads pits that are half a micron wide. A human hair is about 100 microns thick. These data pits are 200 times smaller. The laser tracks these microscopic features while the disc spins at over 200 miles per hour at the outer edge. Any vibration above one millimeter ruins the red. Sony used a 300 milliwatt laser, twice as powerful as regular CD players, to maintain stability even when the console got bumped during play. But here's the clever part. The system doesn't just read data as you need it. There's a 512 kilobyte buffer that constantly loads the next 30 seconds of gameplay. While you're playing level one, the console is already loading level two in the background. This buffer system required careful coordination between the CD drive, the processor, and the memory. Engineers had to predict what data would be needed next and load it preemptively. Get it wrong, and you'd see stuttering or longer load times. This is why PlayStation games had those loading screens. The buffer was masking the CD's actual speed. The processor is a 33 megahertz chip designed by Emips. Your phone is literally a thousand times faster today. But paired with Sony's custom graphics chip, it could render 180,000 polygons per second. That made true 3D worlds possible. Characters had depth, shadows, lighting, realistic movement. The math happening every second, calculating position, rotation, perspective for thousands of polygons, would take you about 15 years to do by hand. The graphics chip was manufactured using half-micron process technology. Each chip contains 1.5 million transistors on silicon smaller than your thumbnail. The factories are a thousand times cleaner than hospitals, because a single dust speck can ruin thousands of chips. Sony made their own semiconductors, which gave them complete control over both quality and cost. By 1997, they'd refined the manufacturing process enough that chip costs dropped from $28 to just $8 per unit. That kind of cost optimization over time is what makes a product genuinely profitable long-term. Here's where Sony's quality obsession shows. Every console goes through 72 hours of stress testing at 45 degrees Celsius, like leaving it in a hot car for three days. The system simulates five years of use in those three days. The CD drive gets tested for 50,000 read cycles. Laser alignment must stay within 0.1 microns. If the lens drifts 0.05 degrees off center, the unit gets scrapped. 
Sony rejected 8% of finished consoles at final inspection. One in every 12 units that completed assembly still didn't meet their standards. They destroyed them rather than risk warranty claims or disappointing customers. This wasn't about avoiding costs. It was about building a reputation for reliability in an industry where cheap products were the norm. Assembly took 45 minutes per console with 28 manual steps. At peak production, Sony manufactured 3 million PlayStations per month across factories in Japan, China, and Malaysia. Each unit passed through 15 separate quality checkpoints before packaging. This facility ensures every PlayStation meets the highest standards of quality. The cost breakdown reveals Sony's strategy. CD drive, $18. Graphics chip, $28. Processor, $12. RAM, controller, case and assembly brought the total manufacturing cost to $106 per unit. Sony sold it for $299. That's a $193 profit per console. But here's the brilliant part. They made another $15 to $20 on every game sold through licensing fees. With 1,100 games released, the real money wasn't in the hardware. It was in the ecosystem they built around it the CD gamble paid off beyond predictions. Storage jumped from 64 megabytes on cartridges to 700 megabytes on discs. You could now have full voice acting, orchestral soundtracks, and cinematic cutscenes. Final Fantasy VII came on three discs with 40 hours of gameplay. Metal Gear Solid had Hollywood production. Gran Turismo included hundreds of licensed cars. These games became the defining experiences of a generation. By the time production ended in 2006, Sony had sold 102 million PlayStations. It wasn't just a commercial success, it fundamentally changed what people expected from games. The PlayStation proved that taking the harder path sometimes leads somewhere better. CDs were slower than cartridges, but they held more data. 3D graphics were harder to program, but they created deeper experiences. Manufacturing to this quality standard cost more but it built trust. A Walkman company beat Nintendo at their own game, not through marketing or luck, but through precision engineering and a willingness to solve problems everyone else said couldn't be solved. But Nintendo didn't give up. While Sony celebrated, Nintendo was building a machine with graphics power that wouldn't be matched for years. It had faster processors, better memory, and introduced analog control to millions. The Nintendo 64 was technically superior to the PlayStation in almost every way. So why did it sell 70 million fewer units? That story is next. <laughs>